let me just start off by saying this is going to be a very hard episode to publish for you guys simply because this is my job this is how hard it is and difficult it is as a coach right when it comes to when somebody's not progressing when somebody's let's say in a stall or a plateau whatever the case may be how and when to make adjustments okay And the reason why it's going to be so difficult for me to record this and share with you guys this information is because my job as a coach is to make it so easy and simple, right? How to lose fat, how to get off your medications, how to have more energy, how to have more confidence, how to, you know, build some more muscle. My job is to make it simple. And and in my opinion, I feel like I do a really good job at that. But to come on here and record a podcast episode and share with you guys when and how to make adjustments when I have no idea who this individual is, right? There's no data, right? If you're a member of mine, right, guess what? I get to see everything, baby. I get to see your food logs. I get to see your workouts, right? I get to monitor your sleep, right? Steps, water intake, the whole nine yards. And plus, I get to see all your data in terms of like how you have been progressing. So I get to see your body stats, your progress photos, your body fat percentage, right? Very easy for me to tell somebody when and how to make adjustments and then educate them as far as their body fat trends and why they need to make this next adjustment based on their trends. Very easy for me to do. But for me to come on here, record today's episode and share with you, hey, I don't have any data, right? (laughs) Very difficult for me to do because I don't want to steer you guys the wrong way. And hopefully, if you're listening to this, one, you can have a more respect for, let's say, uh, any coach that's out there that does this for a living because there's a lot that goes into consideration. And two, you can also think to yourself, it's not as easy and simple as calories in versus calories out. There's so much information and so much data that needs to be known first before making any kind of adjustments, okay? So let's just say that you have not been progressing, okay? And first off, let's talk about what a plateau is. I honestly hate when somebody, uh, let's say they don't lose weight after a week or even not lose weight after two weeks and they're like, oh, I'm in a plateau. Like, no, a plateau, just so everybody's aware, is four to six weeks of not seeing progress. Now here's the thing, immediately everybody's like, oh, progress, number on the scale, that's it, just the the, the weight. That's not what progress is, right? Because one, that is the last variable of progression that we take at Heartletics in terms of progression. So what is progress? Well, first off, body fat percentage, right? That's another tool that we use at Heartletics Uh, rather than just the number on the scale, right? The weight, which doesn't mean anything because there's a big difference between weight loss and fat loss. We always like to educate people. Hey, in the very beginning stages of coaching, when you're in your prep phase, it's very normal to not see any difference in terms of your weight changing. In fact, the weight might go up because guess what? If you're eating more protein, you're doing our types of workouts, right? Where you're building this muscle, muscle weighs more than fat. And so if you're just going off the number on the scale, no body fat percentage, nothing like that, you're, you're going to be an emotional roller coaster because you're only taking one form of progression, one form of data as a variable. So just keep that in mind. Muscle weighs more than fat. Number on the, uh, number on the scale doesn't matter at all. Trust me. Okay. But so your body fat percentage, that's another data point that we like to use. Your progress photos, probably the best form of data that we like to use because once again, Somebody could be putting on muscle, burning body fat, and uh, even if their body fat, I know the RenPro scales out there that we typically use for a digital uh, uh, point, you know, to check data, uh, those things are have all these calculations and whatnot where it can become very discouraging, you know? I know personally for me, um, and if you guys are watching this on YouTube, I'll have two different images up. Uh, the RenPro scale says I'm off within a half a body fat percentage, you know, from the two images. But, right, when I'm doing regular like a tape measure, and here's the thing, right, you do not you do not need a digital scale to monitor and track your body fat. Literally just go to Google, type in body fat percentage calculator, and it's going to give you like the first one. All you need is two measurements, right, your neck, your waist, your height, 
your age, your weight, and it's going to show you all your body fat percentage. In my opinion, it's pretty accurate, you know? But anyways, these two different images, right? Like there's a clear difference. But on the RemPro scale, there's only like half a body fat percentage. When measurements and doing that, it's like two body fat percentage points, two whole points as opposed to half a point, right? So don't be so fixated on number on the scale, right? Don't be so fixated on the data points also for body fat percentage. Progress photos is a great way to see if you're progressing. But also, away from the data, what are some other things that you're progressing with? Let's just say you have more energy. Let's say clothes fit better. Let's say that you're getting stronger in the gym. You're hitting new PRs, right? It's like these types of things are forms of progression. So putting that aside, right? If let's say you're not hitting any PRs, you don't have the best energy, your clothes aren't fitting better, your body fat percentage isn't changing, your progress photos aren't changing, your data, right, in terms of your scale weight is not changing, okay? And let's say it's been four to six weeks, you're in a plateau, okay? So just so everybody is aware, that is what a plateau is. Now, what do we do when somebody's in a plateau? Let me share with you a few things. First off, before any adjustments are made, we want to make sure that we are conversating with that person, that individual. One, sleep, right? Very important because that's typically what people neglect on the most is sleep. We also want to run through all these seven essential fat loss habits, are they, which I'll run through right now, right? Number one, are they staying within their calorie range that they should be for fat loss? Number two, are they eating right the recommended protein for their fat loss goals? Number three, are they focusing on progressive overload and getting stronger in the gym, like they're trying to lift heavier over time? Uh, number four, are they getting in enough steps? The, the NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Five, are they drinking enough water? Remember, if you're not drinking enough water, right, that's going to hurt you in the long run in terms of progressing on your fat loss journey, right? This is why these seven essential fat loss habits are, it's kind of like our Bible that we use because if someone's going through all this, they're going to have progress. And if they're not progressing after four to six weeks, guess what? It's very easy for us to make adjustments, which I'll go over here in a little bit because you want to know how and why to do that properly and most importantly, specifically, right? So that way you don't ruin your progress and hurt yourself in the long run, right? But I digress. Uh, six, right, is the, the, the stress, which is so important. Honestly, I kid you not. I've seen it from time to time again. Uh, somebody could be eating enough protein, doing the resistance training, sticking within the calories, getting enough steps in, uh, drinking plenty of water. But let's say they're stressed out at home. Their you know, toxic environment or toxic relationship that they're in or stress out at work or stress out about finances. Guess what? That's going to hurt you, baby. All right. Long story short, the more stress, the higher chances your cortisol levels are elevated. Cortisol is your body's natural stress hormone makes it very difficult for your body to lose body fat, especially if you're underneath a lot of stress. And then seven is the recovery, the sleep. You know, they did a study. Guys that slept on average, eight hours compared to five hours, head up to more 20% more natural free testosterone. Guys that sleep on average like five and a half hours, you know, it's, it's crazy how much it stalls fat loss, how also uh, your risk for just you know, high blood pressure, stroke, diabetes is skyrocketed, right? So it's like, we want to have that conversation with that individual. We want to look, and remember, if you're a member at Heartletics, we get to see all this data. We're constantly checking in with you, right? Feeling, you know, understanding how you're feeling. So that way we're on the same page, right? This is why it's all personal for you. But we get to see all that, you know, which makes it very easy for us. If let's say they're doing all the right things, Right, that I just kind of mentioned. Now we can go into when, where, how we should change things around. For starters, right, and I'm going to say this loud and clear. Cutting out your calories is the last thing that you should be doing. Okay, hear me out. The first thing that you should be doing is thinking about adding in something more of. So can you add in more steps? Can you get in another workout? Can you make some adjustments to your workout where maybe it's a whole different routine where it's more uh, drop sets and supersets and hypertrophy ranges, right? Where it's it's different. Your body, right, just needs some small little tweaks where you can make some adjustments and boom, instantly start seeing better progress. We like to throw in their consistency habits for maybe like a daily push-up goal 
or a daily ab mat crunches, different things like that, where it's just, once again, somebody's moving around more. So we always wanna see where can we add things in. Then the second, right, ways of making adjustments is shifting around your macronutrients, right? What always works the best for our members is increasing protein, increasing carbs, and lowering fats. So everybody that says, oh, carbs are the enemy and da 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 right, they make you fat. No, your negative mindset towards carbs is what makes you fat, right? And your yo-yo dieting is what makes you fat. And the fact that you think you know everything under the sun about your fat loss goals and your health and fitness journey, guess what, is the reason probably why you're fat right now, right? The reality is this, protein, right, increasing that up, right, is going to help you lose more body fats. It's higher up on the thermic effect of food. We recommend around one gram of protein per pound of body weight, but if you can increase that, increase it, plain and simple. As far as carbohydrates go, guess what? Fill in the gap, right? You can lower down your fats by up to, let's say, 5, 10, 15, 20%. I would not go lower than, let's just say, you know, 30, 35, maybe 40 grams of fat because your body does need that. It is essential. But by all means, right? Shift around, right? Monitor and make sure you're, you're, you're lowering down the fats. And then just increase the protein, increase the carbohydrates, and that small little adjustment right there, I bet you anything will move the needle, right, in terms of helping you progress even more. The last way to uh, go into progression would be to uh, cut down the calories. And here's the thing, right, cut down the calories slowly, small increments, right, 100 to 200 calories serves you best, right, you make this big jump, 500 calories, guess what? Like at the end of the day, it's way too much. Yes, you're going to you know see the number on the skill go down. Yes, you're going to progress and everything like this. But here's the thing: the faster you try to rush through the process, the more you're going to hit the brakes eventually. You know, and when you hit the brakes, let me ask you a question: Do you know what to do when the you, the next time you hit that plateau? If let's say you continue to cut down your calories, cut down your calories, cut down your calories, what do you do after that? Right, I know what to do, and this is what we coach and we teach our clients on. Right, doing a reverse diet or doing some other form of a technique or a skill or training, right, to help them break through those plateaus, right, or go through these, you, you know, mini diet breaks, so to speak. Right, there's so many different tools that you might be thinking right now. Wow, there's a lot that goes into play. Why do you think I start off today's podcast episode with, you should probably have more respect for anybody that does health and fitness coaching, especially if they're doing things properly. Because it's not all calories in versus calories out. There's a whole sweet science, whole data point. And like I said, this is hard for me to share this information because there's no data going off of this. I'm just going off of, hey, if I was in your shoes, here's all the things I'll be looking in terms of. What a true plateau is, your seven essential fat loss habits for success, and then, okay, let's increase in something first, form of activity, and then next, shift around your macronutrients, and then lastly, Cut down on the calories, small cut down on the calories. But here's the thing, right? You can't just continue to cut down your calories every single time. You got to know when and how to play the game, when to make adjustments, when to increase your calories, because it's going to basically go through this process of metabolic adaptation where your body will eventually continue to hit this stall no matter what. You know, so you have to know when to increase your calories, how to do that properly without putting on body fat. There's a whole midst of the madness. You know, and I'm not trying to make today's episode to confuse anybody, but by all means, it's to share with you um, just the realistic facts here. That one, why do you think there's people like myself that's a coach, you know, nutritionist that has jobs, right? Why do you think there's dietitians out there that has jobs, occupation? Like you can't find all this information for free on Google and on YouTube because one, you have to know your body and you have to know specific trends. You know, like everybody thinks it's just calories in versus calories out or just go ahead and cut out the carbs. And it's just like mentally, I want you to think about your body as a vehicle and you think that you know what to do when let's say the cars aren't starting, right? Well, guess what? You start messing around underneath the hood, right? You start messing around with the starter, start messing around with the transmission, start messing around with all these different aspects of the vehicle. And sure, it might work for a little bit of time, but eventually it keeps on breaking down to where eventually you realize here that you don't know what you're doing and you call up your friendly mechanic. And that friendly mechanic says, hey, listen, it's the easiest thing in the world. You just need a new battery. Boom, voila. But the problem is, the issue is, the reality is, you try doing all these things that 
hurt the vehicle, try changing around the starter, right? Spark plugs, all these different things, aspects where you just made things worse down the road to where now that mechanic, right? Doesn't have to just replace the battery, but guess what? They have to fix all the issues that you made. So think about that in terms of your health and fitness journey. Every time you decide to cut out your carbs, every time you decide to, you know, cut out your favorite foods and do this whole like fad diet and these crash diets and these detoxes and these very low calorie restrictions, all you're doing is making it harder for yourself to actually get realistic expectations and realistic results that are long term going to be aiding you for success. Plain and simple, right? You're making it harder for your metabolism. You're making it harder for your health to recover. And at the end of the day, I would just rip off the bandaid if I was in your shoes and you're struggling right now to say, maybe I should just call it my mechanic now before it makes things 10 times harder the older you get. Trust me, let me save you some time. Because at the end of the day, time is the most precious commodity that's out there. You can't gain that back. They make money every single day. They print it out every single day. Go sell some crap on Facebook Marketplace. Go donate some blood or plasma. Go take out a 0% interest you know, credit card. You can instantly get money just like that time you can never get more of so hopefully you guys learned a thing or two about your health and fitness and about how realistically what a plateau is and remember there's a lot that goes into it so hopefully you understand that